So now we're really going to get into using what we've learned about classes and instances and do our first example of real object-oriented programming. So what we're going to do here is build a simple game. Um, so our game is going to be basically a dice game. Um, some number of players. And each one's going to roll a die and the highest score wins. So we're just going to take those notes and that'll become our first game1.py. Okay, so for this to work, we're actually going to create two different classes. Um, a class called game, which is going to have all of the game details, and the class called player, which will have details about each player in the game. Uh, why don't we start with the player class, because that's going to be the simplest one. Uh, basically, for each player in this game, we're just going to have the score, which is what they rolled on the die, and we'll have their name. So the only thing that we really need for now is to define that init function. And we'll just start it with self. We may adapt this as we go on. Um, I've done one draft of this program already just to make sure everything works, but I really want to give you the experience of writing it with you and how you think about constructing a sort of complex program like this and starting with the basics and then adapting things as you go on. So we'll start off with our players and we're going to get a name and so we'll do self.name equals input enter your name and then we'll start off with the score equal to negative one and I pick negative one because that's going to be lower than any value that you would roll on a die and so it allows us to easily know has the player rolled or not um, let's actually just test that out. So we'll say p equals player. And then if everything works well, we should get this prompt to enter the name and we'll know that our player class is working. Okay, so our script worked, but we didn't get anything printing out. So let's make sure we have that saved. Okay, um, so I didn't have it saved. and. Uh, now we're getting an error, and that's because I started this game class here and didn't do anything. So for now, we're just going to put a really simple init function and say pass, just not do anything. So at least we've got a placeholder there. Now if we try to run this, our player function is working, and that's great. So we know, as of now, player is good. The next thing we want to do is work on the game, which is going to be the major part of this. Okay, so we're really going to build this as we write the code, but we know that we're going to need a number of players, we're going to need some ability to roll the die, and then we're going to have to keep track of who has the highest score. So in the init function, we know we can do self.number of players, and that's going to have the number of players in the game. Um, let's actually ask for that from input, so we'll set that equal to input how many players. Now remember the input gives us a string and so I'm gonna put int in front of this so we know we have a number. Alright so if we start to create a new game it's gonna ask us how many players which is good and then we need a list of those players and we have a class for players so what we're gonna do here is say for uh, i in range from 1 to the number of players, and I'm going to do number of players plus 1 because, uh, so if we say we have 5 players, range is normally going to go from 0 to 4. Um, so we say start at 1, but we need to add 1 so we, we get the right number. Uh, so for 1 in the range from 1 to the number of players plus 1, we're going to create a new player. So now what do we do? How do we keep track of all these players? We'll do self.playerList.append and then we're going to put a player in here. So that's a pretty complicated line, um, but this is saying for this particular instance of the game that we're creating, we're going to have a player list. We haven't created that yet. We're going to add on a new player here. So let's start and we'll say self dot 
player list is going to start off empty. Then we're going to get the number of players and then we're going to append one player at a time onto this list. This code actually should run pretty much like it is. The one thing that we're going to do down here is instead of just creating a player, we're going to create an instance of the game. So we'll say g equals game. You'll notice that I often use this shorthand where I use the lowercase letter of whatever the class is. Um, so the class starts with a capital G and I use a lowercase g. That's totally not required. It's just sort of a way that I do it to kind of keep track of what I'm working with. Um, so more of a convention, definitely not a rule. So this should create a new game. That's going to call the init function. The init function says this game will have a player list. This game will have a number of players that we're going to take that input from the user. And then for each player that we said was going to exist, we're going to create a new player and append it onto our player list. So let's see if that code works. I'll make that a little bigger. Okay, so I have an error with my number, uh, with my range here. Uh, and that's because I forgot my colon, a very common error that I make. Um, again, because my normal programming language doesn't use that syntax. So I always forget those colons. That may be the only problem there. Great. So how many players? Let's say four players. Okay, and now we get it, this whole big error, but it basically says number of players is not defined. This is probably the same error that I have been making the whole time we've been doing code this week, which is I forgot self. Um, so number of players, remember that is an attribute of this particular game. So I have to do self dot number of players. Okay, let's try it again. We'll say five players. Okay, it says enter your name. Good. Now it's just going to say that five times, right? So I'll just put in the other players. And that's working. So now we are able to create a game with any number of players. Uh, but it gets a little confusing that it just says enter your name over and over. And so maybe we wanted to say enter your name player one, enter your name player two, and so on. So to do that, we're actually going to have to adjust our init function for player. So we can say enter your name player something that we're going to pass in here. So we have i, that's a number going from one to the number of players. So when we create a player we could say well this is going to be player i and then we need to adjust init so it has that number and we can say enter your name player and then that number. So enter name player, whatever we pass in from I, and then the colon again. So if we're on player one, this is going to say create a new player with one being passed to init. One is going to be the number, and it'll say enter your name player one. That's a little bit complicated, so if you're struggling with it, um, you know, pause this, watch this section a few times. What we're basically trying to do here is say, uh, in this particular game, we want players to enter their name, but there's going to be a bunch of players. So you want to know which player we're on, pass that number to the player init function, and then display it just to make the interface a little nicer. So let's save that and see what that looks like. So we'll say there's five players. Um, OK, and we've got another error here. Um, this is just a string versus int error, a common one that we get. Um, so we have to turn that number into a string. OK, so now it says enter your name, player one, player two. And great, so that works great. And that's a pretty nice interface. So now we have all of our players saved. OK, so we've created a game. We now have all the players in the game. And now we need to actually make the game play. So let's make a new function, play game. Remember, for every function that we make inside a class, we need to have self as an argument. And now we're going to define the gameplay. So the way, that, the way that this game will work is that for each player, we're going to have them roll a die, and whoever has the highest score wins. So it's a really simple game. 
Um, so we need to loop through all of the players. Now we already did that up here, but it's a little more complicated than it needs to be um, because we could also say for player in player list, and that's just going to go through each player. Um, and then we're going to have them roll a die. So we haven't written that function yet, but we'll do self.roll die. And then we have to do some stuff here to track the winner. So there's a lot to do, but let's just mark it like that for now. And let's quickly write that roll die function. Again, we have to put self because it's inside the class. And uh, we're just going to return random.randint. 1 to 6, something we've done in lots of examples. Um, and that means we also need to import random. If we try to run this, let's just do two players for now. Okay, so nothing has happened, and that's because we never actually say to do the play game function. So after we've initialized all of our players in init, then we're going to say self go play the game. That will then come down here. For each player in the list, it's going to roll a die, which is going to return this value. So we're not going to see anything because we're not printing anything, but we will be able to see if there's an error. So let's run that. We'll do two players. Uh, so it says player list is not defined. Again, this means I have forgotten to do self. I hope this debugging is helpful to you. Okay, and it runs fine. So now we've removed all the errors and we just need to put in some infrastructure around this. Okay, so let's add in some printing. So we're gonna print, let's print the player's name. So remember, down in the player function, we have a name attribute. So we're gonna do player.name because our player list is full of players. And then we'll say, so for me, it would say, Jen, it's your turn. Hit enter to roll. So now we have a little bit of an interface. Let's just run it like that. Uh, we're not going to see the rolls, but just to make sure that's working. So say two players. OK, um, it's just printing this out because that's what I told it to do. But now we can see it's going through each player. Now, if instead of printing this, we actually want to have the person hit enter to roll. And so we can change this to input. And then if we make that change and play it again, it's your turn, hit enter to roll. B, it's your turn, hit enter to roll. We're not keeping track of what they input. We just need them to hit enter. So now the game is working pretty well. Each player gets to roll. They don't see their roll yet, but we'll fix that. Um, so we're rolling the die. Let's do player dot score equals self dot roll die. Remember, we have a score for each player. Um, and as I'm looking at this here, I see I made the same error that I have made over and over again, which is I forgot self. So each player has their own score equal to negative one. And so we're going to update that player's score to the value that we just rolled on the die. And then let's print player.name rolled, put a space here, player.score. So we roll a die in the game, that gets stored as the player's score, and then we're going to print that here. So if we run this, say two players, A and B. A, it's your turn. Hit enter to roll. We hit enter. Um, and now we get, again, another common error where we're trying to print integers and strings. So uh, the player score is an integer right now, so we're going to turn that into a string. Try it again. Two players, A and B. A, it's your turn. Hit enter to roll. A rolled a five, B is your turn, hit enter to roll, B rolled a four. 
Okay, so now everything is working and all we need to do is keep track of who the winner is. So to do that, we need to know who has the high score and we sort of need a rule for what happens if people both roll the same thing. Um, for now, we're just, because this is not a game programming class, it's a, a class on object-oriented programming, we're gonna say if they both roll the same value that whoever rolled last wins just to make our life easy. So if A rolls a six and B rolls a six, B wins. Okay, so to do that, we need to know who's winning. So what do we have to keep track of that? Well, we have our list of players. We have a number of players. And so we're gonna have to keep track of which player is winning. Now, it can get really complicated if we wanna have an actual player, an instance of the player class inside the game that represents the winner and constantly changes. Uh, we are not there yet in our programming sophistication, so we're gonna make our lives a little bit easier, and we're gonna store the index of that player in the player list. So we've got a list of players. When we're looking at a particular player, we can just keep track of is player one winning, is player two winning, and then we'll have that number at the end. So we're gonna add in an attribute called winning player number, and we're gonna start with that equal to zero. Now, there is gonna be a player zero, and that's fine because if we have uh, whoever the first player is, they're gonna be the winner on the first roll before anyone else has gone. So it's fine to say the first person is winning by default, and we're just gonna update their score when they run, uh, or when they roll. So, for example, if we have two players, player A goes, um, we already have player A tracked as the winner, and that's fine. Whatever their score is is going to be the winning score until player B rolls, in which case we may update the winning player number to be, uh, to be B. So now we have the winning player number that we're keeping track of, and we need to be able to update that down here. So how do we do that? Because we have an actual player object here. There's a bunch of different options. I think the easiest one is to just start with um, a player number equal to zero. And each time we go through the list, the last thing we're gonna do is increment it. So we're gonna start on player zero. It's gonna loop through the list. It's gonna take player number zero first, do the roll, um, and then increment that to player number one, where this will take player number one. So we're kind of relying on the fact that uh, this for loop is going through the players in order. An alternative way to do this would be uh, to use a for loop like this for the number of players, and then instead of having a player object here, we could be doing player list, square brackets, the index, which will also give us a player. Uh, so there's a few complicated ways to do it, but I think this one's probably the easiest and most straightforward. Uh, I don't have a self here because this is just a variable that exists inside this function. It's not actually part of the class. Uh, it's not part of a player. It's just a little uh, basically bookkeeping variable that we have inside the play game function. So once we do the role down here, I have this comment track winner and we want to do that. So we'll say if this player's score is greater than the score of the current winner. So how do we get the score of the current winner? We do player list and then in square brackets, player num. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the player list, we want the current winner's score. So self dot winning player number, which we are keeping track of up here. So player list, and then in square brackets self dot winning player number, this whole thing will give us a player who's currently winning, and then we have to do dot score. So this very long line says, if the current player's score is greater than the winning player's score, then self dot winning player number equals the current player number which we have stored 
in player num. And to make our lives just a little easier as we're watching this, we're going to print player.name is the current winner. And then I'm just going to append onto that player num just so we can see that number that's getting updated. All right, so I know that was a complicated little bit, but essentially what we're doing here is that we know we're going through the players in order with this for loop. And so we want to keep track of the index in our player list for the current player. And to do that, we've just created this variable that essentially starts at zero. And every time we complete a loop and move on to the next player, we also increment that index. So we're keeping track of the index. All right, so we'll do two players, A and B. A, it's your turn, hit enter. And now we have an error. This is probably me forgetting self again, um, just to see where that is because we've done a lot. So player list is not defined, and it looks like that's showing up in the play game function. Um, and okay, so it's right here, I'm doing player list. And I have self.winning player number, but I forgot self.playerList because it's the player list for this particular game. And that's why we need to have self here. So this crazy line has become even longer. The current player's score is greater than this game's player list indexed by this game's winning player number. That all together gives us the current winning player, and then we want the score of that player. Okay. Try it again, two players A and B, A rolls, and uh, so now we have a new error. The local variable player number is referenced before assignment. So that means I'm using player number before I kind of do anything with it, and that's showing up, uh, and that's because I called it player num up here and player number down here. So I want to make sure that's consistent. So I have player num here, I have player num down here and here, so I just need to make those match. Okay, one more time. Two players, A and B. A rolls, A rolls a one, B rolls a four. All right, so we've made it more of the way through. Now we just have a kind of standard string integer error. Um, Maybe I'll eventually get better at catching those along the way. Okay, so that's that player number. We're now going to make that a string. One more time. A rolls a 2, B rolls a 6, B is the current winner. Um, and it's just printing out the 1 there because that's the index of player B. Let's try it again. Let's do it with four players here. So A is going to roll, gets a 4. B rolls a 5, so that's the current winner. The index is 1. C rolls a 1. D rolls a 5. Um, and so I guess I implemented the rules slightly different than we said. Um, 5 is not bigger than the current winner, and so D is not winning. And that's fine. We'll just leave that as a rule. Whoever rolls the high number, if there's a tie, that person gets to win. So this worked great. Um, all we have to do now is announce who the winner is at the end, which we know how to do um, because we've got the winning player number stored. And in fact, this whole long line, self.playerList of self.winningPlayerNumber, that gives us the player who's winning. And so once our for loop is done and we've gone through all the players and everybody gets to roll, we're going to print that whole mess, <laughs> dot name. So the name of the winning player in our list wins. Hopefully I didn't mess it up with that one line. All right, let's do a four player game. We're gonna have me and then just A, B, and C. All right, so I rolled a six, which means I'm gonna win. Uh, a, it's your turn, hit enter to roll. A gets a one. B's turn, B rolls a six, but their six isn't bigger than mine, so I'm still winning. See, it's your turn. 
So you rolled a four and Jen wins. So now we have this working game um, that you could do for any number of players and it's going to keep track of things. Uh, just to clean it up, I'll delete this little bookkeeping element um, where we were printing the index at the end there. Uh, that was just to make sure we could keep track of it. So this is a pretty complicated program. Um, they're not a lot more sophisticated than what you've already been writing in terms of gameplay, um, but a lot more complicated because we have not just classes, but two classes, and the game class includes instances of the player class. But hopefully going through this exercise has given you a chance to kind of see both computationally, how do we think about implementing this, how do we update our classes to kind of work together as we make this program build, um, and catching all the errors that I'm making probably along with you, forgetting to use self, um, forgetting to cast those things, that sort of that sort of thing. I leave the debugging in there on purpose so you can see how to fix the common errors that you get. Uh, if you just watched this video straight through, I don't think you would be able to replicate this uh, if it's your first time writing programs like this. But the goal, as with all of these videos, is for you to kind of do one line at a time, code along with me, make sure yours is working, compare it to my code, which is posted on the Canvas site, um, and kind of work yourself up to being able to replicate this program. If you feel stuck at any point, if you're like, I just don't know why we need to have self here, or I don't understand this crazy long line at all, keep track of that kind of thing, because that's the sort of thing that you can email me a question about, and I can kind of talk you through those lines in a way different than I was able to do in this video. So there you go. There is a uh, dice game program using object-oriented programming in Python. Um, and we wrote all of this stuff in our classes, but really to make it play, the only thing we needed uh, is this. Create a game, and that starts the whole process rolling.